good morning uh, so we were now uh, on our course module 3 and uh, we have just started in the last class to know about what is the central impact so uh, the entire physical uh, physical phenomena that goes in uh, any uh, accidents or this uh, standard uh, crash tests that are conducted are all based on uh, fundamental mechanical principle uh, what i mean by mechanical principle it is fundamental engineering mechanics or physical science so uh, you know this engineering mechanics uh, is having an important assumption that uh, uh, on first hand is a rigid body mechanics and in rigid body mechanics we account that uh, upon action of forces there is no deformation that takes place on bodies that's why it is called rigid body mechanics even there are deformation that are negligible compared to that of what would happen uh, in a, a huge uh, uh, deformation phenomena so that is what is called rigid body mechanics and then in mechanics if you see there are many uh, branches called mechanics of materials fluid mechanics and then there are many subset uh, 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 mechanics branches so um, our collision uh, of vehicles falls under the category Uh, though you know that it is involving large deformations uh, we can very well uh, understand this physical phenomena considering uh, rigid body mechanics itself with the specific uh, um, uh, assumption and uh, uh, definitions so you would see any rigid body mechanics textbook uh, you would have a chapter called uh, collision of bodies so in our course so since this uh, course is all about understanding vehicle crash routineness uh, which is essentially uh, defining as uh, the vehicle to undergo a large deformation in a plastic deformation form that means uh, it is not going to be uh, retaining its shape after the collision and the portion of your body has to deform permanently and uh, the remaining portion to um, be uh, held without any uh, uh, energy so uh, the entire energy should be spent on deforming the body and that should ensure that the deformation will not get into a passenger cabin so that is the basic principle with which this vehicle safety of that is taken care and um, uh, important uh, passive safety system like uh, crumble zone and uh, 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 important restraint systems all are designed in the vehicles such as the airbags and seat belts uh, knee uh, uh, pads or knee airbags side impact airbags and so on that we have been learning in our course and uh, witness in many of the crash videos <laughs> so i am going to continue with what we have left in the last class Uh, uh in today's lecture so in the last class i let me share my screen hope you are able to see uh, the screen <coughs> and in the last class i just to quickly browse through we have looked at what is uh, impact and that impact can be central impact or non central impact otherwise called eccentric impact so i am going to continue with this so how do you define an impact an impact can be defined as so let me continue with that uh, so these were the lecture points that uh, we were looking at and we will uh, uh, complete these all aspects uh, whatever remains so we were till this point on that day uh, understanding what do you mean by period of restitution coefficient of restitution and uh, we will continue from there right and we will understand what is this conservation of energy uh, that is involved in collision process and so on so uh, in uh, today's lecture i am going to uh, teach you uh, with the uh, uh, following so let's define what is this impact so this impact is defined as a, co a collision between two bodies which occurs in a very small interval 
interval of time and during which the two bodies exert relatively relatively <clears throat> large forces forces on each other some pen problem with my digital pen each other is called an impact is called an impact so this impact can be divided as two central impact or non central impact further the central impact what we were learned in the uh, last period is uh, uh, classified as direct central impact and oblique central impact so um, how this uh, uh, direct central impact is what we were looking at in the uh, last period i'm just going to go with that and then continue uh if you see that uh, the two colliding vehicle here i'm considering this circle representing a vehicle and they are represented at the point of contact during impact uh then i would be able to draw a common normal of contact so this is a contact point there is a common normal and there is a common tangent so this common normal is what is called a line of impact common tangent is what is called a plane of impact now if the centroid of center of mass of these two uh, vehicles are fall in the line of uh, impact then this is called direct central impact that's called the central impact and it is called direct norm is because of the velocity with which they approach and they hit is also directed along the line of impact say this is va and this is vb and this is vehicle a and this is vehicle b and their approach velocities are also lying uh, directed along the line of impact that is uh, uh, in one direction alone then it is called a direct impact so this is what uh, we were looking at uh, in the last class and uh, we have essentially seen that uh, application of newton's law that is f is equal to ma can also be represented in the form of f is equal to d by dt of ma mv so this mv is what we call it as linear momentum so rate of change of linear momentum uh, is what is defining the uh, unbalanced resultant force in a body that is the reason for its motion so that's what is newton second law so this has uh, given as an important principle is principle of uh, uh, impulse and momentum and that essentially state mv1 plus integral f dt equals mv2 right this is from t1 to t2 so initial momentum plus the impulse that are called an external impulse acting on the body the sum is what is at the second instant of time t2 the system uh, linear momentum when i say system there can be many bodies under consideration and uh, the impulses can be many numbers acting on the body and the sum of your uh, uh, linear momentum 
after collision of the system. So two or more than two uh, vehicles are colliding, you would see uh, the summation also is introduced in this uh, uh, principle. Of it's not writing principle of impulse just a minute uh, something happened with my uh, digital pen just It's taking some time, just a minute. So this uh, linear uh, uh, impulse and momentum principle is what is uh, used to uh, quantify uh, the velocities, uh, what is going to be after impact uh, along with the conservation of linear momentum along with the line of impact. So that's what we have uh, looked at in the last class. It takes some time, it is hanged, just a minute. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Yeah, sir. Just a minute. Uh, there's something happened to the screen. We okay, have to restart. It's not responding. Give me a minute. Yeah, it's come back. So are you able to see now the screen? Are you able to see now the screen? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So. So this is what is called the principle of uh, impulse and momentum. So this was used to get a second equation along with the uh, conservation of momentum equation. So what is conservation of momentum equation? In direct central impact, uh, along the line of impact, the momentum is conserved. So what do you mean by momentum is conserved? Since it is uh, two vehicles colliding, the momentum before MA, VA plus M B V B. One minute, there's something happen. I'll have to change this. M V V B. Yeah. Is what is equal to M V A V A dash. V dash plus M B V B dash. Uh, it's not clear to you, right? V B. V B dash. So this is the first equation that we have. In this, if we look at, uh, we know uh, initial momentum of both uh, vehicle. Mass of the vehicles are known, and you know uh, your velocities before impact. And then, uh, um, and then uh, you are to have your second equation. That's what we were deriving in the last class. I will just take the last class uh, slide and show you that what we were doing. 
um, you see that we had this um, um, uh, uh, pictures uh, uh, for to explain uh, the scenario of the entire event before impact. If uh, the particle or vehicle A velocity is greater than velocity B and that would uh, collide with from the rear of the vehicle and then uh, uh, there will be a crash event and then uh, the velocity separation after impact that takes place. So uh, along the line of impact, you have this momentum conserved uh, is what is the first equation. And then to get uh, to solve for VA dash and VB dash, we had to go in for defining what are this uh, 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 period of deformation and period of restitution. So that is uh, describing the crash event. Uh, first phase is uh, deformation phase. Uh, second phase uh, in the crash event is restitution phase. So if you look at uh, individual uh, vehicle and you would be able to apply uh, principle of uh, impulse and momentum. So that's what is applied in this uh, vehicle A, its initial momentum and the impulse is acting on that is offered by B onto A and uh, that is defined as the integral PDT and then uh, it would have uh, uh, momentum. Uh, at the end of maximum deformation that occurs in during uh, period of deformation, uh, that is MAU. So this we have applied and uh, the second phase of uh, deformation or crash, uh, not deformation, second phase of crash event is restitution period. At that time, you would have uh, uh, what is offered is uh, uh, the force R exerted impulse force. Uh, and since it is a restitution period, this integral RDT is called the restitution impulse. And uh, your uh, initial momentum is the momentum, linear momentum of the vehicle at the maximum deformation point. And then uh, the restitution impulse acting on it from B to A. And uh, once it is separated, the momentum of that vehicle is MA VA dash. So having this uh, equation two and three, we were able to um, define an important parameter. What is it called? The coefficient of restitution. So that is defined as the ratio of uh, um, RDT uh, uh, to integral PDT. So it is the ratio of uh, uh, restitution impulse during restitution phase to that of deformation impulse uh, uh, that happens during uh, deformation phase. And in reality, this restitution impulse value magnitude is smaller than that of uh, um, deformation impulse and that is the reason why this ratio would be varying between 0 to 1. So we have this uh, uh, between 0 to 1 as uh, if it happens to be uh, uh, E uh, 0 that is a perfect plastic impact and if um, uh, E is uh, uh, equal to 1 then it is called perfect elastic impact. So what do you mean by restitution, uh, coefficient of restitution, E value zero, the crash event, the entire energy that is involved uh, in your vehicle, uh, uh, colliding vehicle, that is half mv a square of plus half mv b square, entire energy is been taken away completely. So there is no separation velocities and they collide and then uh, there is no motion at all that stops there. So if that is that, then it is uh, uh, perfectly plastic impact. So you have to have your uh, R, integral RDT should be zero. So what do you mean by integral RDT zero? There is no restitution period uh, in your crash event. Then it is what is called a perfect plastic impact. What is uh, very much preferred in your vehicle design to have um, flawless, passive restraint system. That is where you have these crumble zones all are employed in front as well as on the rear of your vehicle so that uh, during the collision, the entire energy is being uh, lost. Uh, so there is no restitution period. There is permanent deformation because of only uh, um, uh, uh, deformation impulse. And uh, tall, if at all uh, small energy, there is no uh, carry forward uh, crash energy to the uh, rest of the vehicle. Uh, if that is so, it is called a perfect uh, plastic impact. In perfect elastic impact, uh, what is happening is the energy is not lost. 
So that means the energy is conserved. So to get the energy conserved, there should not be any energy loss. There is no uh, heat dissipation. There is no uh, um, friction uh, at the contact point. Uh, all are involved. So uh, when uh, you have your uh, E value one referred to an ideal case where uh, you would not be able to uh, um, uh, consume or lost all the energy. All the energy would be conserved. So the vehicle uh, uh, velocity, relative velocity of vehicle before and after collision will not change. So in such uh, 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 impact is what is called a perfect elastic impact. So vehicle is not designed for perfect elastic impact. Vehicle is designed for very closer value to that of perfectly plastic impact in order to save the occupants and have the crash worthiness in your vehicle. So this is what you should understand. This is what is the definition of E. I think in the last class when I was telling, I was mistakenly uh, uh, told that uh, when E is one, it is uh, perfectly plastic impact and E is zero, it is uh, other way I was telling. Please do make a correction of that, right? So now uh, let us continue further uh, uh, with this from this point. Uh, uh, to have more um, uh, clarity and to have an another equations because we have only one equation now uh, that is the equation uh, one here uh, that relate uh, uh, before velocity after velocity through uh, consideration of momentum equation to solve for uh, VA dash and VB dash I require one more equation scalar equation and that equation to derive let us look at like a vehicle A you looked at you can also look at vehicle B and you can uh, have a uh, uh, application of principle of impulse and momentum and to have an uh, uh, equation similar to that of what we had uh, uh, from this uh, would be seen. So what is that from this we had is what I would write and then continue uh, today's class, right? So that's the idea of the rest of the period. So what we were uh, writing is, uh, this is what we were writing from uh, on the uh, vehicle uh, um, uh, linear impulse and momentum principle applied, uh, where E is defined as M A U minus M A V A dash by M A V A minus M A. U. So this is the equation that we had got from the definition of integral R dt by integral P dt. So you get this left hand side uh, from substituting for the values of R dt and P dt uh, from uh, this from uh, equation number two and three here. So this is uh, coming from two and three coming from application of uh, uh, application of uh, impulse and momentum principle. So this two and three equation is what is bringing in uh, this and that is what uh, resulting into this equation. So this equation is what we've looked at uh, since ME is common we can rewrite this as U minus VA dash by VA minus U. So this equation is uh, obtained. Uh, from the start of the collision till the end of the deformation phase where the maximum deformation occurs and the colliding vehicle have a common velocity v uh, sorry common velocity u so this is what we have done uh, uh, in the last class and uh, we were describing this in the similar approach can be applied on uh, vehicle b uh, uh, and then you can also go ahead with writing this equation so if this is uh, uh, vehicle uh, b uh, and uh, this should be its initial momentum m v v b and uh, this goes uh, with the impulse this is uh, B vehicle with the velocity u, common velocity uh, u now. Uh, no, no, uh, here I had to put a linear impulse. 
so that would be offered from a to b so the direction would be like this uh, uh, in this direction so that is your pdt so this is what is uh, going to result in the uh, momentum at the second uh, uh, time so at t2 so a t2 is what we defined as uh, uh, common velocity point right that maximum deformation uh, state so your picture would be uh, something like this right draw for uh, to represent and you would have its linear momentum here would be m v u common velocity and uh, this is for uh, period of uh, deformation similarly you can also draw uh, from uh, for a period of restitution so the momentum at the beginning of uh, period of restitution uh, plus uh, impulse that is uh, called a restitution impulse offered from a to b is what is going to be momentum after collision so this is b so how do i put that equation so this would be m b u and this should be a restitution impulse offered from a on to b that is r d t and uh, here this should be with the m b v b dash <clears throat> so now these two equations are uh, substituted uh, in place of uh, integral r d t and integral p d t i would be able to have uh, the e value equals v b dash minus u by u minus 3d so this is uh, equation 6 so now what i can do i can uh, look at equation 5 and 6 are for the same ratio offered uh, i would be able to add uh, the numerator and denominator independently and if i do so i would get uh, my e value is defined as vb dash minus va vb dash minus va dash by va minus vb so now what is on the numerator this is relative velocity uh, of vehicle uh, b with respect to a after collision and uh, here uh, what is there is relative velocity of a with respect to b of before collision so this ratio is what is now defining your restitution uh, um, uh, co the coefficient of restitution and this should be uh, rewritten as vb dash minus va dash equals e into va minus vb and that equation say number seven uh, <coughs> so let's call this is equation eight and this equation is six this equation is seven so from equation six and seven you get equation eight and uh, this is equation nine uh, so uh, from equation one and nine uh, the two scalar equation i would be able to get uh, va dash and vb dash so this can be predicted uh, and this uh, is helping us to go in for different experimental approach to get this right so this is what does um, your uh, 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 complete physical event description uh, through analytical equation described. So now uh, there are special cases that is what we have looked at. If uh, this E value equals zero, we call that as perfect plastic impact, right? Perfectly plastic impact. So what would happen to your equation one? Your equation one in momentum before, linear momentum before impact along the line of impact, MA, VA plus MB, VB would be now going to be MA plus MB into common velocity. So there is no restitution period and it will be going together with the common velocity u so the uh, consideration of linear momentum along the line of impact would be described by this equation number 10 this is a special case in a case of plastic impact 
At that time, you see that uh, uh, E is one that refer to the equation 9 as VB dash minus VA dash equals VA minus VB. That is equation 11. So this implies uh, receive, uh, this implies what uh, uh, to you? The impulses whatever is received by each particle during the period of deformation and period of uh, uh, restitutions are equal, right? That's what is uh, this implication by equation 11. The particle move along, uh, move away from each other after <sighs> Uh, one minute. So this this is what uh, this is first case. This is case one, and this is for case two. This is for uh, case two. Case two is what is e equals one. When e equals one, you have uh, this equation. This become like this. So when e equals zero, this is the scenario. Eleventh equation represent e equals one. What is uh, uh, describing perfectly elastic impact. Elastic impact. So perfectly elastic impact. Uh, you are uh, able to uh, relate that the relative velocity before and after is equal from this equation 11. Or you are able to say that the impulse is received by each particle during period of deformation and the period of uh, uh, restitutions are equal. And the particle move away from each other uh, uh, after the impact uh, with the same velocity. So these are all the different way that you would be able to describe so what is very important in this case the energy also is conserved so what do you mean by energy is conserved writing the kinetic energy before impact is equal to kinetic energy after impact and that could be easily obtained by means of this so in this equation 11 if i multiply uh, uh, here this is vb dash minus va dash it's not vb dash minus uh, yeah, so I will rewrite this equation. Let me take this uh, uh, VA dash uh, on the okay, sorry. So our equation one. So let us take our equation one. What is equation one? Uh, consideration of linear momentum along line of impact. So the equation one would be rewritten as MA into VA minus VA dash. So the linear momentum after collision, I take it on uh, left hand side and uh, of the vehicle A and linear momentum of um, vehicle B before collision, I take it on the right hand side. So the equation become MB into VB dash minus VB. So this, let us say this is equation one dash and then uh, uh, equation uh, uh, 11, whatever is there, that would become as I take uh, this VA dash on this side and VB on this side. So it's going to be VA plus VA dash. So sum of the velocities before and after collision of one vehicle is what is going to be equal to sum of the velocity before and after uh, collision. So VB plus VB dash. So this equation is called 11 dash. So this 1 dash and 11 dash are the modified equation to represent perfectly elastic impact. So during that energy is conserved can be proved simply by multiplying left hand side and right hand side independently member by member. So I would be able to get MA VA minus VB VA dash multiplying with this term again VA plus VA dash. On the other side, I multiply MV, VB dash minus VB with the VB plus VB dash. So if I do this multiplication and also divide by uh, 1 by 2 on both side, I would get uh, energy is conserved. So it's going to be half MA VA squared. So this is going to be VA squared minus VB squared. So uh, VA squared minus VA dash squared. So I take one on the other side and this. So rearranging the terms, I would be able to get yeah, half MA VA squared plus half MV VB squared is what is equal to half MA VA square VA dash square 
plus half mv vb dash square. I get this. So this is what is uh, conservation of energy. And in reality, this is an ideal case. Uh, any body which is under collision cannot have a perfectly elastic impact. And it would only have um, semi-elastic uh, or elastoplastic impact, it is called, or perfectly plastic impact uh, has been um, uh, researched now to get uh, closer to it by means of many material developments. <laughs> So uh, this is what is uh, uh, the description uh, of your direct central impact understanding. So how this direct central impact uh, uh, analytical equations are obtained are through two uh, uh, definition importantly. One is linear conservation of linear uh, momentum along the line of impact and uh, definition of uh, uh, coefficient of restitution. So these are the two equations sufficient to solve the same. And uh, this is all uh, essentially uh, we look at uh, Newton's uh, second law in a convenient form called uh, uh, principle of uh, impulse and momentum. You can also have uh, a look at your uh, Newton's second law in the form of work and energy principle I would just introduce that in now uh, and then we will see that in later class, right? So what does that as uh, this uh, F is equal to M A, where this A is defined as dV by dt, right? You know, any motion kinematic parameters are function of time. So what are the motion parameters? It's position at any point of time. It's velocity at any point of time or its acceleration at any point of time. And these all are functions of time. So you have basically x as function of time, v as function of time, or a as function of time. So these are the uh, three primary kinematic equations. And you can also have a representation of uh, your uh, velocity as function of x, acceleration as function of x, or acceleration as function of velocity. <coughs> so V as function of X, function of space. What is the velocity along the observation of its path? At uh, this point, uh, what is the velocity? At a distance 10 meter, what is the velocity? And you are able to express that. <coughs> that is what is the secondary motion equation. And you can also express uh, acceleration as function of V. You can also express acceleration as function of x. <coughs> These are called the secondary motion equation. These are the three called the primary motion equation. So there are, there are only six kinematic equations. So these are called the kinematic equation. Kinematic equation. What is this is called? Fundamental motion equation. motion equation <coughs> for translation for translation so if it is rotation you have an euler equation that is m is equal to i alpha this is uh, also going to be looked at <coughs> in case of the ideology is not the particle mass point mass you have to account the geometry of the vehicle also for to study like a rollover uh, uh, phenomena uh, of your crash event, you cannot uh, uh, simply uh, describe the physical event only from the Newton's second law. Uh, you also require this the Euler equation. We will see that in detail in non-central impact or Euler, uh, eccentric impact. At that time, you will see. Right, so these are the uh, motion parameter for translation. So similar equations you have uh, for uh, rotation as well. That is what is angular position, angular velocity, and uh, angular acceleration. Again, they are function of time. So you would have similarly six equations to describe your rotation. Your rotation. So radial uh, relationships are called are given by primary uh, equations. Uh, like here, it is going to be theta f of t. Omega is going to be function of time, and uh, alpha is going to be function of time. Or you can also have uh, omega as function of theta equation, 
and uh, uh, alpha as function of theta or alpha as function of omega. So these are the account rotation and these are the account translation. And these six equations uh, uh, of translation, six equation of rotations are um, kinematic equations. They are grouped as primary and secondary. So this is our general uh, motion parameters description. And in reality, the translation and rotation would take place simultaneously. So you would have all these uh, uh, 12 uh, relationship uh, kinematic equations. Uh, are required to describe its motion geometry. So these are all uh, background uh, understanding of our kinematics of motion. You know what do you mean by kinematics? So kinematics study of motion path geometry without considering cause of the motion. So if I consider uh, along with the cause of the motion, that's called the kinetics. So kinetics involved in, along with this, the fundamental equation what is uh, uh, Newton's second law and Euler equation. So I get here an acceleration, I get here an angular acceleration. So if I have this as function of time, I would be able to predict uh, uh, in case of translation, velocity and position, uh, in case of rotation, angular velocity and angular theta subsequently. So this is what is uh, fundamental. So the definition of uh, uh, your acceleration is this, and you can also refer this acceleration as function of velocity when you say, that is V dV by dx, right? I can also uh, represent it in this way. So uh, this is another form of uh, our, uh, acceleration uh, described. So if I take this and uh, uh, if I had to go in for uh, substituting this in acceleration uh, here, I would have my equation uh, F equals M into v dv by dx. So if I take this dx on the other side, f dx is what is m v dv. And I would uh, have this uh, uh, integrated on both sides from position x1 to x2. And here from position v1 to v2, I would be able to end up with <coughs> here. This is what is work done from position 1 to 2, force into displacement, uh, differential displacement. Uh, is what is work done. If I integrate from position 1 to 2, I will get the total work done from position 1 to 2. And this side, I would get uh, my kinetic energy uh, at position 1 and kinetic energy at position 2 difference. So if I take uh, kinetic energy at position 2, so this would become what the u 1 to 2 is what is going to be of uh, m v 2 square plus minus of m v 1 square. So this, if I carry on the other side, I'd be rewriting this half m v1 square plus work done from 1 to 2 is what is half m v2 square. So this is what is called the work and energy principle. Like impulse and momentum principle you have seen, this is what is called work and energy principle. Just a minute again, it's hanging. Yeah. Work and energy principle, right? So you would also able to have some problem. So in the collision event, uh, after the collision, uh, what is the displacement of the vehicle? All you have to find where it is explicit relationship between um, force, uh, uh, displacement, or position, mass, and velocity you would use work and energy principle, right? So you can also use this, apply this work and energy principle in the uh, event of collision, like you have applied a linear impulse and momentum principle. Uh, in the uh, direct central impact, right? So these are the fundamental mechanics uh, which were uh, uh, used to, are uh, used by us to understand complete crash event. <laughs> so uh, I, I to start again with uh, the another uh, impact, what is called uh, oblique central impact. So the main difference in oblique central impact would be uh, this. So here, if you look at, we had uh, um, uh, this picture here where these velocities before and after or approach velocities are along the line. 
of impact. So if it is uh, with an angle to the line of impact uh, and having the masses centers along the line of impact, then that is going to be uh, oblique central impact. So that's what uh, we will do in the next class in the afternoon and then continue our lecture further on Wednesday two periods and uh, till Wednesday, whatever that I'm teaching would be for your uh, midterm examination. So if you have any doubt at this point of time in this, you can please ask and then I would answer and then end the lecture. Any doubt? Do you have any doubt? If there is no doubt. Yeah. Yes, Harsha. There are no doubt. Let me stop recording. <laughs>